Hello, hello everyone. Happy Friday. Welcome to Facebook Live. Just going to take a second to get everything connected like we always do. And okay, it looks like everything's good to go. So I'm just going to give us a second for people to find us and I'm going to share this over to my group real fast and then we'll get started. I hope you all are having a great day out there today. Can't believe it's Friday already. This week kind of flew by. I don't know about anybody else, but this week kind of just got ahead of itself. I don't know what happened. Okay, let me blow this up on my laptop. I do see some folks are joining, so that's a good sign. All right, let me back up just a little bit, get everything straight here. I always have a problem with that. Okay, well, it's mostly straight. <laughs> I can never get, ah, oh, hold on. My phone is not secure. There we go. I wondered why everything had moved and I knocked my phone out of the holder. So I'm glad I caught that. So we didn't have any disasters. So welcome. So if you are watching, um, leave a comment, say hello. Let me know you're here. Let me know that you can hear me and see me and all that good stuff. We'll get all that out of the way. Sorry, I know it's blurry while I'm kind of moving around here. So just hold tight and we're going to get going here in a minute. Let me, let me pull this a little towards me. I think I jarred my camera holder with my head a few days ago. <laughs> Hi, Shirley. Okay, good. I always wait for the first couple of comments so that I can make sure I'm connected and all that good stuff. And um, then we can get started. Well, welcome, everyone. I see a couple people are watching, so I am going to go ahead and get started. Um, I, first of all, want to welcome you to Facebook Live. Um, Hello, Anne says, everything is clear. Thank you, Anne. Awesome, and welcome. I'm glad you could join today. Um, so welcome to Facebook Friday. I'm going to start out by introducing myself. My name is Anne Marie Heil. I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in San Antonio, Texas. You can find me on my blog at stampinann.com, and I come to you live Fridays at 4 p.m. Central with um, a card idea. Sometimes we might do mystery stamping. Sometimes we might do um, a variety of different things so it's just kind of whatever whatever happens on that Friday is what we do and today I had a couple people ask about a card that I posted recently and I thought it'd be fun to make this card live because it was super fun so we are going to be making a card today with the nothing's better than bundle um and this is not a new bundle from Stampin' Up! by any means, but I think it's an oldie but a goodie. And it happens to be carrying over into the new catalog. So I, um, you know, sometimes when I'm feeling a little overwhelmed with product, we, um, as Stampin' Up! demonstrators right now, we could do a pre-order from the new Stampin' Up! catalog. And everybody right now seems to be really gung-ho about showing all of that new product. And I wanted to do an unboxing video, and then I thought, well, that's not really fun because you can't get, if you're not a demonstrator, you can't get any of those items now. So, so it's kind of like, well, I don't know that I really want to do that because it's, we've still got some time before the new catalog. So I wanted to, um, I just thought it'd be fun to show something that you can get today. Um, so if you're not a demonstrator, this is something you can order. Now I want to point out a couple quick things to you. Um, in the link, um, or in the description of this video, I have a link to my blog post, which has all of the measurements for the card we're going to make today. I will not be going through measurements on the video. So if you need measurements for anything, please click that link. It is in the description of this video. There's also a full supply list on my blog post with everything that I use today. And if you click, uh, if you go to that supply list on my blog, you can click on the links and you can go right to my online store and you can purchase those items for your yourself if you don't already have them. Okay, so um, also I do want to mention I have a host code here. Um, so what this is, is if you shop with me in my online store um, and use this host code, I will send some, and if your order is over $50, I will send you um, a PDF tutorial to give you more inspiration for your creativity. We have, um, it's a great tutorial. There's lots of awesome information in there. And um, 
And the only thing I do need to mention, if your order goes over $150, don't use the host code when you're shopping with me. I'll send you a gift as well as um, tutorials as well. So because at $150, you earn your own host benefits. So I want to um, make sure that you know that. Okay, so I will also be posting this over on YouTube after I do the Facebook Live. So if you prefer to watch on YouTube, I will put a link um, once it's posted. And I do also want to let you know the link to my YouTube channel is in the description of this video as well. If you'd like to head over there and subscribe to my YouTube channel, I would greatly appreciate it. I started it not too long ago and I'm really trying to build up some content over there. And um, I have some plans to do some fun things over there. <laughs> okay, so welcome, welcome. Um, also, please go ahead, hit that like and heart button. I love seeing that. Comment on the video it makes me so happy. Um, and it also, if you do those likes and hearts, it lets Facebook have more people um, see the video, which I appreciate too. So hello, I see some folks are joining and I see some um, new folks are joining today. So welcome. I'm going to take a step back real quick. Um, hi, Opal. Hi, Laura. You love the set? I do too. Oh, there's Janie. How are you? Um, Melanie, Karen. Okay, I'm gonna have to go back and catch up. Hi, Darlene. Darlene says she likes the chocolates and words in this set. This set is so cute, you guys. How can you go wrong? You've got cocktails, coffee, chocolate, and cookies. Like, come on. <laughs> There's something for everybody in this set, right? Um, so fun, fun. So thank you so much. Now I want to go ahead and let you know I do have some prizes from last week before I get started. So I like to get this housekeeping out of the way at first. It gives people a chance to find us. So hold tight. We're going to make the card. Don't get impatient. I got to give away some prizes. Prizes are good, right? So last Friday on Facebook Live, if you missed it, this is the card that I made. Hello, Mary Ellen. Um, with the beautiful tulip set. And so this is a card that I made on the video. And for one person who shared the video, I put everybody's name into a drawing and I drew Diane Kronk. You won this card that we made. I did the inside too. So Diane, um, I do need your mailing address so I can send this off to you. So um, I love this card. I think it's so pretty. I hope you do too. So Diane, I don't know why my post-it's not sticking. <laughs> Congratulations, Diane. And then I have a second winner um, for everybody who left a comment. I have this cute birthday card. Um, so this is using some of our, it, it's a retired celebration paper. Shh. It came in like six different colors. And I just, I made it in all the different colors. I loved how it came out. And I made a, like two sets of them. And so I wanted to share this birthday card because I figure everybody needs a birthday card, right? So it says happy birthday. And on the inside, it says time for a happy dance. And this is a cute little stamp set that's in the Stampin' Up! mini catalog. I don't know the name of it off the top of my head. You thought I would pull that, but if someone knows, chime in. If not, I'll, I'll look if, if anybody has a question. Um, but I just loved how this came out. And I want to send this birthday card to Anne Margreth Pons. I, I, saw, I think I saw you're here, Anne Margreth. And I, I actually am going to be sending something to you next week. So I am going to pop this in your package next week. So congratulations. But Diane, I do need your mailing address. So if you could just pop me an email at annemarieheil at gmail.com or you can leave me a message here on Facebook and I will get that in the mail to you. Congratulations, ladies. Woo! <laughs> All right. Next up, same thing this week. Everybody who shares the video, leave a comment. Let me know that you shared, whether you share with your friends um, in a, you know, in Messenger or send them the link to this video. Let me know that you shared. It'll get more people watching and I will put everybody into a drawing to win the cookie card. And, and then I'll have a second card for everybody who leaves a comment. So please, please, please interact on this video and, and comment. It keeps me going because I'm, I'm standing here talking to myself, you guys. So I like... Um, I, I like when you guys talk to me <laughs> while I do this. And if I miss any posts I will or any comments, I definitely will go back at the end and I will reply to you guys too, okay? Um, so let's get started. Cookie card, here it is. Guys, how cute is this card, right? Today's plan, consume cookies because adulting is hard. <laughs> It really is, isn't it? Um, but you could even change up the sentiment too. There's so many fun sentiments in here. You could do today's plan, consume cookies, 
and be awesome. I think that's another one that's in here too. Yeah, and be awesome. Um, I don't know. I just think the sentiments, I saw somebody had left a comment. The sentiments in the set are so cute. And what I love about this is the coordinating dies. So this is the Nothing's Better Than stamp set, and it coordinates with Love You More Than dies. Now, what I love is the dies cut out all of the featured elements, but then you also have these fun word dies, love you more than, there's coffee, cookies, chocolate, and cocktails. I mean, how fun, right? So super, super cute. Um, I love this. And thanks for sharing, Karen. And I know I missed a whole bunch of comments. Hi, Paula. Opal has this set. Pull it out and use it. Yeah. You know what, guys? I think it's so easy to get caught up when all the new stuff's happening. We get caught up in you know, all the new shiny things. And there are so many fun little hidden gems in the annual catalog that, um, you know, they just need, you just got to bring them out again and have some fun with them. I, there's nothing more exciting and fun than cookies. <laughs> the only way this set could be like better if it's possible is if they put ice cream in here. <laughs> That's just my opinion. But anyway, this is the card we're going to make today. The inside of the card is so cute. You guys too. I, I did. The card makes me happy. Look at there's little cookies inside with little hearts. It's so fun. I just, I just think it's so fun. I hope you guys love it. We're going to pop it together. Again, all of the measurements for this card are over on my blog and it's linked in the description up above. So if you want to make it with me, you can pull out your supplies and we can do it together or you can make it at a later date. <laughs> so Laura says the inside is adorable. I know. I just think, I mean, you can't go wrong with like extra cookies. There's, there's lots of cookie goodness on this card. It's just so cute with the little bite and the crumbs. I don't know. It's cute. Um, Melanie says, I don't have this set yet. It's carrying over, which is awesome. Yes. We've got a whole nother year with this. It's going to be in the new Stampin' Up! annual catalog. So it's not going away. You got a chance to pick it up. All right. Our color combo for today's card is real red, basic black, basic white, and crumb cake. Easy peasy. Um, I love the red with this. I tried this card <laughs> with like Coastal Cabana, like a bluish green um, in place of the red. And I just really liked it with the red. I thought it was kind of striking. There's something about red and crumb cake together. What do you guys think? Where's my bone folder? Um, so anywho, I just kind of liked it with, with the red. Okay, let me get my... Okay. Okay, I just want to make sure that I can see everybody's comments before I get jamming here. Okay, so I am going to have a real red card base. Um, I mention this every time if you visited me before. I, when my um, cards are done in like a profile mode like this, I like them to open top to bottom. Um, if you would like your card to open like a book, you're just going to have to adjust your card base measurement, okay? So just like to kind of point that out. So we have a card base. And then we're going to do two layers. So we're going to start with a basic black layer, and then I'm going to layer it up with, oh, did I cut that right? <laughs> I did all this. I'm also making this card for team swaps this month. So I did a mass cutting of this. I just need to make sure I cut it. Okay, it looks good. <laughs> I was like, did I cut that straight? Okay, so um, I have the basic black, and then I have the crumb cake layer that's going to be there's going to be a little one eighth inch border. So we're just going to have a little pop of black. I just feel like this is, I just need like a sliver <laughs> of this off. I'm just going to take like the tiniest sliver. Okay. That agrees with me a little bit more. It's like the tiniest little sliver, but it made all the difference. Um, oh, oh, hold on, hold on. I just accidentally unplugged my laptop. Don't want to do that. Facebook Live always runs the battery pretty, pretty heavy. Okay, so we're going to do crumb cake and we're going to get started with that. So I have, so for the background of this, I did a bunch of cookies in the background. There are so many cookies on this card because darn it, if you're going to have cookies, go big or go home. That's what I always say. So <laughs> I'm going to start by doing some cookies in the background. Now keep in mind, our focal element is covering the center. So don't have to worry about putting cookies all over, but we want it around the border. So I'm going to start with the four corners. The key is to make them look random. You don't want all the cookies going the same way. So I'm going to start in the top corner, put the little bite mark in the corner, 
And then on the bottom corner, I'm gonna put the bite mark in the corner. And then here, I'm gonna go like that. And maybe like that. Okay, so I'm gonna start with the four corners and now it's all random from here. So just keep twisting and turning my stamp so it looks super random. Uh-oh, did I go too? I might have to put some crumbs right there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so just keep turning the stamp and you don't want them to all look the same way. I'm going to pop some crumbs right there. And okay, so a little stamped off just kind of a, a bunch of cookies. Now, I am going to, when I originally did my card, and I hope you can see it, I'll try and move it up here so you can see it a little closer. So when I originally did it, I stamped the background and I wanted to add a little bit of texture. Um, I just, I'm a very tactile person when I make cards. I like them to, I like to touch them and feel the elements too. Um, and I just think it adds a little bit of interest because this is kind of flat. So um, I am gonna run this through with the Tasteful Textile Embossing Folder. Now that is, I've mentioned this before, if you've ever visited me, it's one of my favorite embossing folders and it is retiring so um i'm gonna do that i'm not gonna bring the big um machine on camera you can look at the card while i emboss <laughs> i'll be right back it's just a lot of work to move it in for one thing so i'm gonna run it through And if you wanted to, you could even um, use a sponge dauber and just kind of put some crumb cake ink around the edges too. I like it clean, but I think it would look nice if you distressed it too. But the Tasteful Textile, see I can pop it up. It just adds a little bit and it's cool. It feels good and I love that. Opal says red's her favorite color. Cool. I like, I'm a pink girl myself, but nothing like, nothing like a red. I don't know, it's just bold and it stands out. There's just something about red next to crumb cake and black and white. It's just a good traditional color combo. Okay, oh. My glue might be, I had it open. <laughs> you guys, look at this cute little pin holder that a friend of mine got for me. It's a little donut and it has little pins for the sprinkles. Is this not the cutest thing in the world? Um... I love desk accessories, um, but she got me this, and I was like, this is the cutest thing I've ever seen in my life. So, how cute. So, I just I just popped a little, popped a little pin in there to unclog my glue. So, oh no, what's going on with my glue? You know what's going to happen? It's all going to come out at once. <laughs> Hello, Lisa. Oh, here it comes. Nice to see you. Happy Friday. I hope you are doing well. Oh, there's a big... There's a big glue booger in there. Let me move that. Um, oh, that came out fast and furious. Okay, ooh, let's not make a mess. First thing out of the, <laughs> right out of the gates. Uh oh, look at that smear of glue. It's okay. I'm gonna clean it up now before I spread it. Oh yeah, some days, I said, I'm making these for swap cards as well. So I just figured, you know what? I'm going to do it for Facebook Live today too. And I'll put an extra one together to give away to a sharer. And it'll be just like you were part of the swaps. Well, well, except you won't be getting a lot of cards back. You'll get one, but <laughs> same thing. Okay, we're good. And, oh, I see Jean saying hi to Lisa. And hello, Jean. I know you're from North Dakota. I saw that in your comments earlier. I lived in Grand Forks, North Dakota for a few years. Really, I enjoyed it, other than the cold. <laughs> but in the not winter months, I love North Dakota. I mean, I love it in the cold, too. Um, we made some great friends there. You know, the one good thing about the cold, cold weather in North Dakota is that um, you can't go outside and really do anything, especially if it's a blizzard. So we had lots of fun game nights and crafting nights, and I, um, I, was, I, I enjoyed my time there. My husband 
is retired military from the military. And when we lived in North Dakota, he was gone <laughs> more than half of the time we were there. So I felt like I lived in North Dakota, <laughs> like by myself for a few years. Um, but, and it would be crazy because there'd be like a blizzard outside and I'd be looking out going, oh my gosh, this weather is terrible. And he'd, he'd call and I'm like, oh, you know, where were you? Sometimes I didn't know until he got there where he was. And he's like, oh, we're in South Africa. And I'm like, that's nice. Um, <laughs> that's so sweet. Um, <laughs> enjoy that warm weather. Okay, Anne says, what is that holding your glue bottle? Um, you know, a, a friend of mine made these. They're little, uh, it's a 3D printed, um, a 3D printed uh, glue holder. It's just a little plastic 3D printed um, glue holder. I think you can find them even on Etsy too. Okay, I see Jean says you live on the opposite side of the state in Beulah. Okay. Lisa says, what is swing in weather, North Dakota to Texas? And Karen, your oldest son lives in Grand Forks. Fun. All right. Um, yeah, that is a big swing in weather between North Dakota and Texas. That is for sure. Um, it's already super warm down here. Okay, next up, we're going to do... This is a die set that you guys, I am not going to lie to you. If you don't have scallop contours dies, just get them. They're worth their weight in gold for these frames in this scallop border alone. They coordinate with the color and contour stamp set, which is great. You have choose to cut out your stamped images, but these guys, these are workhorses <laughs> and they're carrying over into the new catalog. So you can still get them, but I use these so frequently. Um, I'm going to use the second from the largest to cut this out and I'm going to cut it out in, in real red. I'll be right back. I'm going to do that again. No sense bringing in the machine for a couple things. Oops, except I have to make sure it's covering the whole cardstock. Plus the machine really shapes my, shakes my desk when I use it. So Okay, Opal says your husband's retired Navy. You can relate. Yes, yes, you can definitely relate to moving around, I'm sure. Okay, so we have this fun little frame, and I love that it has this little polka dot border. Now, um, I went ahead and did two layers in here because that's just how I roll. Um, <laughs> if you did not want to do the second layer, I think this would be just fine. When I originally did it, I had done it with just the white, but in retrospect, and because I like to cause a lot of extra work for myself, I <laughs> went ahead and added a second layer just because I had that black layer here and I thought it just looked really nice here. So um, again, measurements are on my blog, so don't don't freak out if you didn't get a measurement. I'm not sharing them. They're already, I already typed them up and they're posted on my blog. I'm using my friend, the Stamparatus. Um, <laughs> I love this tool. This is an awesome tool for perfect stamp placement every time. I already went ahead and I, I positioned these where I wanted them. Hi, Sonia. Thanks for sharing. Um, and now I can just mass produce these. What's nice is my stamps are already positioned. I probably should wash this off. <laughs> Good night, Janie. Thanks for joining for a couple minutes. I know it's late where you are in the Netherlands. Oh, look, guys. I grabbed a stamp pad to balance this. Look, it's a new color. Sweet sorbet. Little sneaky peeky. I can show you the new ones. I'm sure you've seen them, but I can show them to you in a minute. So what's cool is I already have this lined up. So I'm going to pop my magnets on to hold my, my piece of cardstock. Don't get these magnets too close together. They will they love each other <laughs> and they love to fight with each other. So if you put them too close together, they will draw together and snap. So be very careful. And you also don't want your fingers in there when that happens too. Not that I know from experience. <laughs> so, and you saw, I put a stamp pad um, behind my plate here and that's going to help keep it level. So when I ink it up, I, it kind of minimizes that I'm going to get a lot of ink on the plate. Okay, so I will... I'm going to stamp them up and I put these on here to leave room for my die cut word and since I'm making these for swaps it's so easy I can just boom one right after the other oh almost knocked my iced tea over oh. <laughs> and ta-da already done so Stamparatus is awesome for that 
It's also good if, you, if you're somebody who has a hard time stamping straight, the Stamparatus really helps with that too. Okay, real quick, just because it's here, I'll show you the new in colors if you haven't seen them. We have Sweet Sorbet, Parakeet Party, Orchid Oasis, Tahitian Tide, and Starry Sky. Actually, this might have been cute to do this card in Sweet Sorbet, but it's too late. I already cut everything. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not doing it again. But these are the brand new Stampin' Up! In colors coming in the new catalog. So be on the lookout for that. And if you are one of my customers um, who has purchased more than $50 for me in the past six months, then I will be mailing catalogs out later this month. If you do need a catalog, let me know. Um, you can definitely just shoot me an email. Again, I'll pop my email up here if you want to see it. Um, I can definitely get one of those in the mail to you. The only thing I do ask is that you cover shipping for the catalog, and I will in turn give you a coupon to redeem um, for the price of the shipping on your first order. Okay, so um, if you need a catalog, let me know. I'm happy to get one out to you. Okay, we're good. Do I like how I stamped that? I think it's fine. Yeah, we're good. Well, it's a little heavy on the end. Oh, perfectionist central here. You know what? I think once it's all together, it's going to be fine. All righty, here we go. Um, let's get it together. So I am just going to start assembling these pieces now. Um, I really need to close my glue sometimes when I'm working, especially this big jumbo bottle. I buy the big bottle of Tombow because I go through so much of it that I need to, those little bottles just don't cut it. I need a big one. Hi, Pam. I see Amanda's here, hello. Okay. Just make sure I we don't see any ripples in the glue. Looks like I, despite my best effort, got some glue on there. And there is a big bottle. It's you're not going to get it from Stampin' Up catalog. You're going to have to I buy it wholesale. So, um, but yeah, it's a Tombow. It's a multi XL bottle. Um, I just go through so much of it. It's just easier for me to buy a bigger bottle. But it's the same same glue, but. A big bottle. Okay, we're just gonna put all these labels, to, or labels, layers. Now comes the point where I don't know what I'm saying. Um, <laughs> pop that on there. And these layers are measured so that you can still see that beautiful dotted border, which I love. And you know what? I don't think I grabbed. I did not grab a fresh pack of dimensionals and they are across the room. And every one of my dogs is perfectly peaceful and quiet right now. So we are going to use remnants of Stampin' Dimensionals. <laughs> so we're gonna use, we're gonna use these today. Oh my goodness, you guys hear my stomach growl? <laughs> Sorry about that, if you heard it. I thought about getting a little snacky snack before I got started, but then time got away from me and I forgot. So you might hear my stomach growl here and there. I'm a little snackish right now and cookies aren't helping. <laughs> I'm looking at these cookies and I'm like, oh, hungry. Okay, so we'll just pop this layer on now. Dun, dun, dun. Just make sure it's straight. Okay. Keep those out, we'll need them. Now we need to stamp our cookies. And, oh, we need to do one more thing too. And I always mean to show this on the video and I never do. So um, we're gonna cut something else out. Find my guys again. So we're gonna cut out the big cookie word. And so we're gonna use the love you more than dies. We're gonna get cookies. And you could actually do this card design with any, you could do coffee cups, you could do little cocktails, you could do chocolate. So you can use the same design and you can use it with any of the um, elements in this kit or in this bundle. Okay, so this right here is adhesive um, sheet. And what I love about adhesive sheet, and I don't ever really show it, I don't show it that much. 
I like it because it turns your die cuts into a sticker, essentially. So all you need to do is get a little piece of adhesive sheet and a piece of cardstock, peel the top layer. I'm gonna do that so you don't have to see an extreme close up of my dry hands. Um, <laughs> oh, Dakota's snoring. Can you guys hear her? She's snoozing, she's laying on her back snoozing. They played hard this morning, so they are all tired out. I made sure to tire them out so they wouldn't be naughty on Facebook Live. Okay, so you just adhere this to the back of your cardstock and just trim off any excess that overhangs so it doesn't get on the plates of your cutting machine because it's kind of a pain to clean. It's not a big deal, but it's a pain to clean. <laughs> and then what we're going to do is we're going to cut out cookies. So I'm going to do that and be right back. Now, when with the cookies, you have to be careful because there's a little dot to the eye and it's really easy to lose. So, so it always tends to stay, or at least in mine, it tends to stay in the, in the die cut. So um, just make sure not to lose that. It's a little persnickety, but I guess you could even dot the eye with a little heart if you wanted to or even a gem if if keeping track of that little one is too hard for you then you could dot it with a rhinestone or something else get all these little bits out okay so we have see those all those little extra bits I just need to pull those out so we'll put cookies and look guys it's a sticker like how fun is that boom 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 easy peasy no messing with liquid glue, no getting glue all over the place. And what's nice about this too is you do have a short window of time with this where when you stick it down, as long as you don't push it down really hard, you have a little time where you can pick it up and maneuver it. And then once you push it down, it'll adhere. I'm trying to get the background off the dot, the eye. <laughs> this is the only thing that's kind of, and ask me because I, I'm making these for swaps. I've done like lots of little dots. It takes a little while, but like I said, you could even use a rhinestone if you wanted to sass this up and not have to peel off the backing from that itty bitty dot, but super cute, right? Today's plan, consume cookies. Now we got to make some cookies. So we are going to, now for my original card, um, I went ahead and I'm going to bring this in to show you and I heat embossed the cookies. So the chocolate chips looked kind of melty and um, it adds a little bit of shine. It's kind of hard to see um, in person though. It's really cute. Um, <laughs> to be honest, I haven't stamped all my cookies yet for my swaps. They may or may not be embossed. I haven't quite decided because it's a little time consuming. I'm going to emboss them for the video today though. Um, just just because if you have an embossing buddy, um, unfortunately, Stampin' Up! doesn't sell these anymore, but they're easy to get. You can find them on any craft supply place sells them. They're embossing buddies, or you could even use a dryer sheet to pick up some static. Now, I'm embossing these in black. Hold on. I'm going to turn my fan off for just a second. Learn from experience. <laughs> and... So I'm going to heat emboss these in black embossing powder. And it's it can be a little messy, so I don't want to turn off my fan and all that good stuff. But, um, but yeah, I definitely, I don't know that I'm going to emboss them all for the swaps because it's a lot, you guys. I am actually, I'm going to do, I'm going to do the outline of the cookie first. I did these both ways. First I did the filler and then I stamped the outline over the top and I found this was an easier way for me to line it up. So we're going to stamp, oh. I guess I left the crumb cake ink on there. <laughs> Whoopsie, it's okay. We're heat embossing in black. It'll cover up that crumb cake. Oopsie. Four, five. There's five cookies. Oh, one looks like it's a little close together, but it's okay. So it'd be fun to show some heat embossing. I don't show it very often, so... And with the black, I like to do this in its own little container because it can get messy all over your work surface. So I like to use one of these containers with a little spoon where I can 
be able to tap it in there and it doesn't go all over my desk. It's still going to go on your desk. Oh, <laughs> like that. Um, whoopsie. Hold on one second. Okay. I can't believe I did that. Well, I mean, I can't believe I did that, but whatever. That's how the cookie crumbles. But um, bump. I'm here all day. No, I'm kidding. Sorry, I'm punchy today. I cannot believe I did that. Hold one moment. I'm going to get this little brush. When you have black embossing powder on your work surface, guys, it gets on everything, especially if you're working with um, white cardstock. So just be super careful. Or another tip I find when I do with black is... Um, just work in a different area with your embossing, okay? Um, I try to maybe go to a separate space, do it on my kitchen counter, maybe somewhere that's a little easier to clean up. Um, so we are going to take a moment and just have a little cleaning moment here just because we're going to be working with a lot of white cardstock, and I really don't... <laughs> I really don't want this black embossing powder on everything. Jean says keeping it real. That yeah, we are keep, that's what we do here. We keep it real here. Okay. Oh my gosh, I've got scraps all over my shirt. What's going on here? Okay. And again, you don't have to heat emboss these. Um I think it's a nice added touch. It's a great extra detail, but if you're making a lot of them, um, <laughs> If you've got time, then, you know, by all means. But I just thought they kind of had that melty texture to them, like little chocolate chips. I guess, are these chocolate chip cookies or oatmeal raisin cookies? What's your vote? These are a little close together, but it's okay. I'll make it work. Um, I say chocolate chip. I'm... And I know a lot of people aren't team oatmeal raisin. Um, I don't mind oatmeal raisin cookies. I actually think they're pretty good, but I like them with cranberry, dried cranberries instead of raisins. I don't know. I'm not the biggest raisin fan, but I'll take chocolate chip any day. Okay, I want to point out to you guys, see how even with the embossing buddy, we still got some strays here. And... I'm not that worried about it because I'm die cutting these. So I don't really, it doesn't really bother me too much that there's a little bit of sprinkling of embossing. But again, <laughs> if you're not doing this with a tripod in front of you and everything else, you'll probably be able to, <laughs> to do this a little cleaner than I just did. Okay, now I want to point out, um, you want to make sure, and hold on, I'm just going to move these up. I want to make sure I got all the embossed areas. I did. Okay. Um, so you want to make sure you give your heat embossing a chance to dry before you do this. So you can set it off to the side for a second or whatever. You know what we'll do? Let's just do the inside of our card while we're waiting. How's that sound? Not that it takes, it needs a long time to dry, but let's stamp the inside real quick. So we're going to take, I have a piece of basic white for the inside and I'm not heat embossing the inside. Um, there's too much white space on the inside that I didn't want to run the risk of um, getting lots of stray embossing powder in there. So, okay, we're talking about cookies. We've got chocolate, team chocolate chip seems like it's winning here. <laughs> I like both, but only when they're warm. Oh, there's nothing like a warm cookie. Oh my gosh, you guys, are make, I'm so hungry right now. Okay, so I'm going to use Tuxedo Black Memento, and we're going to do a couple in the corners. Again, twisting and turning them. So you want the images to be kind of random. You don't want them all going the same way because where's the fun in that? Okay. Now, when you fill these in, I'm going to use crumb cake. Now, the filler stamp is not meant to fill the image completely. Um, there will be a little bit of a white border around there. I... I wanted it full, so, okay. See how you can see a little white border there? And I think that's perfectly fine. It's it's not, I think it looks fine, but I'm coloring mine in because I want some, some good solid cookies. So you can achieve that a couple different ways. You could either go over it and stamp it again a little closer to the other side, like move it over a little. 
but then you have to be careful because it, it might make your cookie a little too dark. Or you can do what I did and just take a Stampin' Blend marker, which is right here. I'm using Crumb Cake Light, and I'm just kind of going around the little white areas and shading it a little bit. And again, you don't have to do this. If the white border doesn't bug you, don't worry about it. But just know the image is not intended to completely fill the cookie. But I'm just going to drag it around a little bit and shade it. Okay? And to do the hearts, I am using some little hearts from the Sweet Conversation stamp set. This is also in the Stampin' Up! mini catalog right now. I'm gonna use this little trio of hearts and red ink, what could go wrong? Um, <laughs> but I'm only gonna ink up one heart, okay? So I'm gonna ink up one very carefully. And one heart. And again, tilt your hearts and move them around. Now, this heart image, just so you know, is not really intended to be a super full coverage image. See how it looks a little kind of muted almost? Um, that's, that's fine. Um, you could always take your real red Stampin' Blend marker and just go over the center a little bit if you want it more pronounced. Um, I'm sure there's another stamped image that <laughs> you might have in your set that has a heart in it too. I just happened to grab this one because I wanted a heart. I knew this one had it and um, I just figured I could make it work. But if you have like a punch or a die cut and you just wanted to glue the little hearts in, you could. I just wanted them a little more red. So I just went over them very, very gently with my um, Stampin' Blends marker just so they weren't so kind of muted. Again, that's totally a matter of preference. You can do whatever you want, but I think it looks fine either way. But um, I'm a perfectionist about some of that stuff, so pay no attention to me. Those are just my quirks. Okay. I'll just pop this on the inside now because it's done. It's so cute. I just love these little chompy cookies. They're so fun. Okay, so now once your embossing is dry, you do the same thing for your cookies. Put your filler image in. And again, if it looks, I didn't ink up again. I'm just moving it to the side a little bit. <laughs> again, if that little border, I actually got that pretty even all the way around. If that little border doesn't bug you, um, just leave it as is. It's totally fine. It's meant to be that way. Or like I said, you can just go over it with your Stampin' Blend and just drag the color so it's solid. And then what you do is you'd cut this out with the coordinating die cut. And because I know watching someone die cut in five cookies is like watching grass grow, I went ahead and did that already. <laughs> so I have five embossed cookies already die cut. I'm going to save these to use on my swap cards so they won't go to waste. <laughs> I just figured, here you guys can see, here's my, here's my little stack that I'm working on here. So um, <laughs> those cookies will go to good use. Don't worry. Okay, let me move inked stamps out of the way. That's how accidents happen. <laughs> so we have a clean surface here. All right, now we just need to assemble our cookies. So what do you guys think? Do you like this card so far? I think it's super cute. Okay, so we're gonna do two cookies in the top corner and I'm working with mini dimensionals, not by, not on purpose, <laughs> out of necessity. My other dimensionals are across the room, so. Okay. Does anybody have any big plans for the weekend? Share while I'm popping these cookies on. I'd love to hear what you're up to this weekend. And again, twist and turn your cookies so the bite marks are going in opposite directions so it has some random pattern to it. 
And I realize I popped this layer up with dimensionals and I'm also popping the cookies up with dimensionals. So a couple things if you're worried about bulk mailing, either glue this layer to the card um, or glue these as opposed to popping them up. I like dimension and I like, you know, spending $5 to send a card to somebody. So... <laughs> So if that's your jam, then by all means, um, pop everything up. <laughs> so I am going to do something, one thing just a little bit different than my original card um, on this card because when I did put it in an envelope, it really drastically changed the, um, whatchamacallit, the uh, thickness of the card. So I'll point that out to you in just a moment. So we're going to put, I could probably put these on with one mini dimensional, but... Since this is going to go to somebody, I want it to make sure I want to make sure it's well made. I like a sturdy card, you guys. <laughs> I think don't make don't make flabby cards. We don't like flabby anything, right? <laughs> so okay. Whoops, wait, no. Dimensional is closer to the top because the bottom of the cookie is gonna overlap. Okay, and then Again, changing up those bite marks so they're all kind of random. I like to do odd numbers for embellishments. Um, and three cookies didn't seem like enough, so I went with five. And then we have all these cookies and then even three more cookies inside. So there's lots of cookies to choose from. Okay, on the original card, I used the black and white gingham ribbon. And I did a double bow. And I'm going to be honest with you. I love the way it looks. But it really, it kind of, I think it would take the, I think it would really affect the postage to do a double bow. So I am going to do a single bow on this card. Again, it doesn't look as exciting, but we have to be practical here, guys. Um, you know, if you're hand delivering this card to somebody, do the double bow. It's worth it for the wow factor. But for mailing... I think a single bow still gets the job done and there's going to be a single bow on my swaps because again that's how the cookie's crumbling <laughs> so when I'm mass producing what do you guys do when you make cards just out of curiosity are you a I need better scissors when you sit down to make a card do you like make multiples when you make a card or do you do you make one of a kind cards? When I make cards for like designing and stuff like that, sorry, I have to get my angle. I know I'm not even on the camera, hold on. I like to make them one of a kind, but if I'm mass producing, I I do, I don't wanna say I cut corners, but I, I do have, you do have to factor in things like, um, you know, bulk and things like that. So if I'm making a lot, sometimes, you know, I might not use as many layers, but but I do for special people and special occasions. I always will make an original, but but like I said, for a little bit of duplication, and I think the single bow looks totally fine, guys. And trust me when I tell you the double bow, it, it just, it's a lot to mail. So keep keep that in mind. I mean, you can look at them side by side. Personally, I like the look of the double bow better, but this is way more practical to mail. <laughs> and let's be honest, it costs a lot to mail a card, guys. So, you know, you want to make sure. And your recipient's going to love it because you made it, so it doesn't matter. We're going to use some red rhinestones just because I felt like this card needed a little something-something. and But I didn't want to go too crazy with embellishments because it would I didn't want to distract too much from the cookies. So I thought the rhinestones were kind of relative in size to the little chocolate chips, so they worked. They didn't seem to overwhelm the card front. And there it is. Let's see. Anne says the bow adds a lot. Shirley says she tries to make two of the same thing. I know a lot of people do that because if you're going to cut a, a card base in half, you might as well just make two, right? You'll have two card bases if you cut a piece of cardstock in half. So why not make a multiple? I usually do if it's like a birthday card because <laughs> I always need birthday cards. So there you have it, guys. And another thing you could do if you wanted to is you could even take... 
my favorite, Stink of Wella or Wink of Stella. And if you wanted to, you could just add a little, a little a couple little dots of Stink of Wella to your cookies. Just very gentle. Don't squeeze and get it all blotchy. But if you wanted to add a couple little spots of sparkle, you could do that too. But there you have it. What do you think of the cookie card? The inside's my favorite part. <laughs> so there we go. Super cute, right? So if you don't have this set, I definitely encourage you to um, look into it. It's just a really fun little stamp set, and I think it's great for all occasion. I'm, I'll mess with that after. You know me. I have to fidget with a bow until the cows come home. So. <laughs> so what do you guys think? If you love this card, give me a thumbs up. Give me some hearts. I love seeing it, and... It makes me feel good. And don't we all need that today? And in, in turn, I'm going to send you guys lots of hearts, cookie hearts, <laughs> for watching today. So, oh, Karen, you're so sweet. Thank you so much. Andy says she's crazy about these. Andy, make this card. It's so stinking cute. Um, <laughs> so there you go. Today's plan, consume cookies because adulting is hard. So good motto. Put that on a t-shirt, right? Um, <laughs> all right, guys. Thank you so much for watching Facebook Friday with me today. I really enjoyed creating with you. Um, I posted a card earlier, a paper pumpkin alternative on um, the Stampin' Ann Facebook page. So check that out too. And um, definitely, like I mentioned, if you're not walk, watching my blog over at stampinann.com, um, go ahead and check it out. I post uh, lots of fun content over there. And I also link to my YouTube channel too. So please, I'd love it and would be so honored if you would subscribe to my YouTube channel. I have some big plans coming up for that and I'd love to have you join me. I'd love to do more videos over there that aren't Facebook lives. They're actually just going to be video videos. So oh and one last thing I want to make sure to talk to you guys about before I go. Makers Mojo Creative Escape. It is a quarterly event that I do with four other demonstrators. We are doing that um, on the 23rd of this month. It's a virtual all-day event. Um, it is 10 project tutorials and so much content. It is linked here in the um, on my Stampin' Ann page. I'll put a link in the description of this video too if you want to check it out, but I would love to have you join us. We even have a special, a very special presentation from a special guest from the Stampin' Up! Home Office. So I'd love to have you join us. Um, I will put a link up so you can have more information about that. But um, stay tuned. Be on the lookout for that. It's also over on my blog. But thank you so much for joining today, you guys. I hope you all have a great, great rest of your day. I meant to mention that earlier. <laughs> I forgot. Um, so take care. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments and I We'll get back to you. Have a good one. Bye-bye.